dashboard what i love about milano is the fact that you're able to customize your automations you can segment you can do forms you can create websites all the things are possible in here right one mm. of the things that i really really love is the fact that their um the ability to actually create campaigns is literally mm. debated based on what you want you have regular campaign do you know what a regular campaign is um Oh, could you, could you Absolutely. Explain? All the questions, right? So a regular campaign will be just a campaign that you're sending over to a group or to everyone, right? Uh -huh. A regular campaign will just mean that it's going to be scheduled or sent on an immediate basis. For an A-B split campaign, this will be as if you're sending out like testing segments, right? So you have group A that you're going to send out some formulated like whatever it is that you want to send there. And then you're going to have group B, which you're going to send out um, this same email or just restructured or you can have a different subject or a different kind of formula inside of there mm. where you're sending them. So it's just the same email or Two, I would say this correctly, two groups and then mm -hmm. two different kind of variables or variations mm -hmm. of the email, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you have these, which are not relevant right now because they're mm -hmm. for paid plans, um, but you're basically able to do RS, RSS campaigns from like your website or blog. It comes from that. You'll probably hear mm -hmm. RSS from like WordPress a lot um, or mm -hmm. different areas. And then AutoSend is one of those great like, Features where you can basically give your your as it says give subscribers a second chance to open your your um, newsletters. Basically, what that means is that after they've um, after it's hit their inbox and if they mm -hmm. don't open it after like a day or so, whatever you schedule that for, it automatically resends it to them. Oh. And in that space, you're able to then create like a um, different subject for them to say hey, you didn't see this the first time, so you want to see it the second time? So a lot of times, you'll either do one of these types. And these types are going to be really focused on um, kind of just having that process of, do I want to just send, and I'm sorry for the trash can, my daughter just <laughs> likes to touch stuff, but I want to just send um, a, regulated, a regular campaign where I'm sending a newsletter out, or I want to just send out a... Uh, a campaign but I want to change the variation of it and I want to send it to one group and then this, and, and send some different items to a different group got it. Okay. we're yeah. gonna just do a regular campaign and I'm gonna say welcome right mm -hmm. so the campaign name is gonna be what you choose it to be so it can be a welcome email it can say abcd.com it can say mm -hmm. whatever you want it to say because in this space it's just for your knowledge for you to see it okay mm -hmm. So when I hit continue, it will ask me now more detailed questions about this campaign, one of them being mm. the subject. So what I like in my campaigns, I normally use um, like uh, their first, you can use their first name if you want because it's personalized, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you have the field that pulls their first name, this will directly say, Marie, hey, welcome. Or mm -hmm. it can be anything that you want in there. But I like to top it with an emoji. I'm very fancy mm -hmm. in this area. And so my favorite emoji to use is a crown because that's, <laughs> you know, based on my royal scheme. Yeah. So I'm always using a crown to kind of simulate the process of royalty. And then in that area, I'll say, you know, the emoji, the name or whatever subject I want to make it catchy. The idea behind an emoji is for them to be able to click it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the baseline there. Um. Now let's talk about the actual um, background of uh, exactly who it's from. And I want to make sure that my screen is not being cut off because it does this all the time if I don't have it in the right spacing. All right. So I'll put this here. All right. So when you go down, mm -hmm. this is going to be who it's from. Who it's from is going to be you. It's going to be mm -hmm. the name that's going to pop up in that first part of the email mm -hmm. that comes up. And then mm -hmm. also you're going to see the um, 
sender email that's going to be where it's coming from. So mm -hmm. in this case, your sender email will be you. You see the note here that says, we strongly recommend not using domains from free Gmail, um, email providers. Mm -hmm. So that's Gmail, Yahoo, MSN, um, anything that's like just a domain from a different brand and not your own. So if it were to be, you know, info at, and then I-D-O-S-E-L, how do you mm -hmm. pronounce that? Uh, El Dos? El Dos Corner. Yeah. Right? So if yeah. it was info at eldoscorner.com, that is your domain. So they recommend mm -hmm. using that domain to give it more of an ability to kind of like reach the account. Because a lot of times, um, emails that have like Gmails or whatnot, they go into spam. Okay. Mm. So you have these options here, which I'll briefly talk about it. One of which I know more about, the other one I don't. So the track opens basically enables you to see if someone opened the email. So you're able to track if someone opened it, right? And then okay. also the UTM tags, it's normally able to track the URLs that are clicked in the email. Mm. So the one that I'm not really too familiar with is how the UTML, the UTM work, tags work, because even though it's self, like it's self-explanatory, mm -hmm. um, it still doesn't speak to, okay, what exactly is that um, that analytics speaking to? We can always take a look at the data after, mm -hmm. but that's basically what it does. Do you have any mm -hmm. questions about this screen? No, I don't. Okay, perfect. So you're already becoming a pro. This is great. <laughs> so, the next screen here is going to be where you are going to create your template or you're going to start from scratch or you're going to use a recent email. A lot of times we find that it's easier to kind of not reinvent the wheel. So um, if we're going to do something more creative, yeah, you can start from scratch. But if you've already had a template, like we created a template here for you, then you're mm -hmm. able to use the template. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to start actually from scratch in this sense so that you can be able mm -hmm. to see what it looks like. And then I want to mm -hmm. also show you the template um, gallery. Because you're on mm -hmm. the free plan, and that's also completely fine, they give you a lot of great benefits. Mm -hmm. You're not able to get the templates, but you can create your own because you mm -hmm. are a genius, okay? <laughs> so starting from scratch really just means that you're going to have these options. A lot of people use the drag and drop uh, editor, which is literally them providing you elements that have already been predestined, pre-templated, and then you will create the information, you will add and update the information that's in those um, elements to fit mm -hmm. your needs. Mm -hmm. The rich text one, kind of same thing, but it provides you more of like, you know, a, a, it's, it's more of like a upscale type of editor. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. really change as much, but it kind of provides you more of that kind of like newer vibe. I don't know how best mm -hmm. to explain it. And then the custom mm -hmm. L um, HTML editor is if you know anything about coding. And if you do know about that, you then are able to get that in the advanced plan only. But also mm -hmm. one of the things that I like about it is that you're able to add like different um, embed codes and things like that in that area mm -hmm. as well, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. I always use the drag and drop editor because not only is it efficient, but I'm sometimes lazy. So uh -huh. I like to just make sure that I'm able to like really get what I need and just go on mm -hmm. a quick hurry, right? What this is, is a templated start. They always start you here in this mm -hmm. template. And what they can do, what you can do is in each section, you can delete, you can edit, you can do all the things that you want to do because you have the, the, the creative um, vision and also the creative direction in this space, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we always want to do is you're going to click into the box. So you notice that if I click in, you see that I can't type in here because mm -hmm. All the editing actually gets done on the right side. Mm. On the left side, you're able to see the updates and everything that's done. But on the right side, you're able to make the changes. Okay. So at I the see. top, you can change your logo or you can mm. literally delete this entire top row if you wanted mm. to. But let's say you accidentally did that. You can add it back. Right. Yeah. You do have a logo. So I'm going to go ahead and browse and make sure that you can just add your logo in here. We've already added a few pictures. So one of them where's mm. your main logo. And this is where you're going to be seeing a lot of your files. So this is going to be called the file manager. The file manager is going to hold all of your images um, and it's going to store it from the unlimited amount of time that you want. This and then you will see it basically um, show and reflect all of the things that you put in here. But 
You can also import from a URL, your Google Drive, Giphy, because I'm mm-hmm. a Giphy hoard. So Unsplash, which is a, a spice where you can actually get images and then Icon Finder, which is for icons, really. So in this case, we're going to actually just pull over your logo because that's what this is the one that we're working on right now, the section. So this will be your logo. I'm going to first talk about the updates that you can do in the box itself before moving down. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first thing that I want to talk about is the settings button. So the settings button, it gives you the ability to change the um, spacing. Mm-hmm. And it also gives you the ability to change the alignment. Mm. And it also gives you the ability to change the width of mm. the logo. Right? So this is specifically for logos, right? Because this mm. element is about logos. But one of the great things about it as well is that you have the option to hide it on mobile or show it on mobile. The reason mm. why this may be important is because maybe you want to show certain things only to desktop views because you know a lot of people are either going to be on desktop or on mobile. So if you want to mm. give them a different perspective, this is mm. the best way to do that. So you can do that okay. on either way. Another thing that I love a lot is the fact that you can either turn the background off to give it more of a transparent view, um, Mm -hmm. which means evidently that you can also change the background color to be what color you want it to be. And then Mm -hmm. you can also um, just turn it on, but make it a different color specifically for Mm -hmm. the header, right? So I want to make the header white because I think it matches their background a lot better. Mm -hmm. But as we shift down, we're going to make an edit. We're going to make an actual email. So it could be like something that you can, you know, see in the future. I always like to start with this for this email. It's going to be welcome. So I'm going to Mm -hmm. see, say welcome. What do you call them, peeps? Uh, Little pies. Little pies. (laughs) So I love that you're able to um, like adjust the verbiage in here. Not only are you able to adjust the heading verbiage, but you're also able to create or add a link here for people to just click on that. Because you know when you hover over, you're able to see links. Like you see how this um, the little icon changed, and now it's a button, oh. so you're able to click it. So if someone were to scroll down on your um, email, they'll see that, that little same little reflection of that button and they can click it. And when they click it, it takes them wherever you want them to go. Um, oh. And that's one of the best ways to kind of like segment. If you wanted to segment, that is a great way to segment in this case as well. But what I really like the most about this is that in the settings, you have those same settings where I can say, okay, I want to put this a little bit further down. I want to space out the bottom or whatever it is that you want to do. You still have that Mm. hide on mobile button option. And then you also have the ability now to change the the kind of font that it is. Mm. So if you wanted to do bold because you want it to be very big, you could do that. If you wanted to change the actual font, you could do that. My one of my favorites is using the play um the Playfair um font, but if you wanted to change it to be something more bold, you can change it to whatever you like here. Mm. Um and time is probably a bold one. This kind of matches your aesthetic, no? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it would be one of the ones that you would choose. I don't normally use a sub description, but you can if you want to. Um, mm-hmm. And this is something to kind of engage the readers, as it says here. And mm-hmm. this will be something that you would want to do in the sense of where you'd say, okay, let me give you a sneak peek into what you're about to experience, right? Mm-hmm. So you can do that if you chose to. You don't have to. Um, but this is the fun part. The fun part is actually being able to change the image if you wanted to add an image here. And we're just going based on the template. But if you wanted to add an image here, I'm going to actually shift this down a bit to give it some spacing. And then I'm also going to go ahead and go ahead and change this. So I'm going to go ahead and make a Giphy. So I'm going to import. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to use what we already have, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to use this. Now, because this is repetitious, I'm just going to delete this one. Mm-hmm. But I want to be fun. So I'm going to change the background. This is the background color. Okay. Oh. So you can change the background color to whatever you want. You also have the option to change it with a slider if you wanted to. I'm eyeballing it. So I'm trying to take the closest color to what I'm seeing in your picture. I think mm-hmm. it's a little bit lighter than this. So I'm going to take that color, not the perfect match, but it is what it is closest to. So I would take that. And then I also, because I kind of want to have this blend in, I'm going to remove the background for this. Again, 
This is all customizable. You don't Ooh. have to do this, but you can, right? I don't like Ooh. it without the background, but I, I do like it with it, so I'll leave the background on there. But let's say that that's, that's what we want to do, right? So you have that ability to do that. And even if I say, okay, you know, let's actually take it off from here. And then um, let's take it off from here. So you can literally take it off from all the locations. So it kind of flows like this if you wanted to. But it, mm. it's really all dependent. I'm going to leave it on for both because I think it looks mm -hmm. better with both. And then I'm going to go ahead now and say... Okay, perfect. Let's do a call to action, right? So a call to action normally is going to be whatever you want to add. It has a link. Mm. You could do um, whatever kind of button you want. But it doesn't necessarily have to be directly a call to action now. You can actually go ahead and add another block, if they call it, or element. And let's say that you actually wanted to add some text here. You can just literally, as the purpose says, drag mm. and drop it over. So wow. even if you wanted to do a logo here with a navigation, you can do that at the top. So you, when people click certain items, and you click on this, it takes them to those links that you want them to go to. Okay. Wow. So for example, if you wanted them to go to your shop, if you wanted them to go to the course, um, and then let's say that's all you had, right? You can mm -hmm. delete these, and then that can just be the navigation. Let's say that you mm. wanted to change the, um, the, the links color instead of them being black you want them to be red you can change mm. that as well there as well as the font and the padding and if you want to show and hide that on the mobile mm -mm. so that is fun i'm going to delete this one i'm going to actually use this one and i'm going to change this to be this background All right okay. so again now you see that it's a little bit smaller which is fine i'm just going to make it a little bigger boom all right and then I'm going to mm -hmm. take the padding up like this because I think the spacing is fine here. And then the text will go here if you wanted a text. Um, and then now this section is pre-populated, but let's go into now the blocks to see what are available in the blocks for you to find fun in here, right? So you have items even with like the full logo and content layout. So that looks like this. And basically, it shows you that this is a full entire, like, strip that you don't have to do much of anything. It's the same thing we created here, right? But it's yes. just in this sense here. I'm going to delete yes. this one. You also have ones where you're able to just post the subtitle um, here. So if you wanted to have, like, an introducing and then a subtitle here, you can do that, which is fun. Mm -hmm. um, or if you wanted to do something a little bit more fun... You can do some links, like you're just literally putting like popular article links. And again, these can be individually updated. And then as a mm. whole, you're able to update the entire padding itself. Okay. Mm. Um, one of my other favorite ones that I like to use are the video ones and the image ones. So the video ones, Ooh. you cannot embed videos inside of an email. It's just not possible in this world. Um, yet mm -hmm. anyway, but let's say that we went to YouTube and I'm going to choose a very random video. My kid loves, um, like she loves, I mean, this, this is one of her favorite things, right? So uh -huh. I'm going to actually copy this URL and then I'm going to post it here. What happens is that, um, it's so intelligent that it's going to actually pull the, um, thumbnail eventually once it pulls through of mm -hmm. the actual video itself and then mm -hmm. that will kind of keep you in the space of, um, I don't know why Fathom wanted to show up for no reason. Okay, Fathom, go away. I know that I'm recording. All right, there you go. So it's going to mm -hmm. pull the actual thumbnail in a second for it to be seen. Um, and then once it gets through, then that will be how you'll be able to actually see the preview of it. Just give it a second, mm -hmm. it'll come up. And I'm mm -hmm. going to, and instead of me having to drag stuff, you have the option of dragging it like this. But you saw how my, my, for some reason, my mouse keeps going down. What if I don't want to do that? See, look at this. Oh. You see how cool wow. it is? So it creates an embedded GIF. So you're able wow. to actually have it. And then when they click it, it takes them to the actual video and not inside yeah. the email as a play. But what I like about it is that it allows you to change the image if you want it to be a static or animated. It pulls it from the actual video itself. And then if you want it to link, it's like if it links, it, it links to a custom um, link itself. So if you want to have a custom link, then it can go there. Or 
Um, if you wanted to just link to the source, you can do that. The other thing mm -hmm. that I like is that, do you know what alt text is? I've seen that word very much, but is, is this like one for like people who can see? So alt text is similar to that, yes. Okay. Um, and I, I, I would, I don't even know if I can even relate it to it, but I'm sure that it can be. It's really when someone, um, yes, I think it is the reason why people do that. Honestly, now I'm thinking about it. You're a genius. Um, <laughs> so the reason why um, alt text is so important is because if in the case that people can't see, which is a very relevant point, that they're able to hover over something and it mm -hmm. has a description of what it is. So as mm. you can see now, as the mouse is hovered over it, the description mm. that's there, it says video, right? Mm. So video is the alt text. Like if I were to mm -hmm. put an alt text here, it says image, but if I were to change it from saying image, it would say, welcome little pie. That would be the mm. alt text to read the actual image, right? One of the reasons why I know alt text is important is because Google cannot read images. Google mm. can only read text. So when you're trying to be searchable or being found on the internet, the internet just can't read image, like text on images, if that makes sense. Mm. So it has to be an actual alternative text that says what's on the image itself, and that's how mm. it works. Okay. Mm. Um, so we're having fun. So we're going to leave the video in here. Um, again, <laughs> you have the option to kind of like change the padding. You can change the width of it. So you can kind of have it custom to where you want it to say, I don't want them to see it this big. I actually want them to see it a little smaller or the same size of my mm. actual video, whatever the case is. You have the ability to do that in this text, in this box as well. One of the mm. things I was starting to talk about is if you wanted to move the, um, items without having to physically drag it you can just use those arrows as well to kind of use that mm. this is the edit button so it takes you into this right screen you can duplicate things on a click of a button so that you can keep the same formatting and visibility as you had before and that would be where exactly mm. it will be duplicated and then if i wanted to remove it it's a quick and easy just click of deletion and then going down to it one of the other fun things that i like is that you're able to add different kind of like article links or images inside of like these like narrations here. So you're saying mm. if you want to point out that you have like weekly blogs, then you're able to kind of like name them here. And then from here, you're able to just basically create that um, separate clicking option. So people mm. can click directly to that. And then instead of you having to have them click into the whole thing, they can click one button and it takes them to a specific space or page. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's so many fun things. Okay. Yeah, they have a lot of options. Yes, they do. So I'm going to show you the options and I'm going to proceed to next. One of my other things I love is horizontal text or you have the, the horizontal text and image. So you have the image and then the text or you can do it flipped. So you have the text and then the image. And then you have options like this where you can add the same kind of like in features and things like that. The greatest thing I like is that you can add gallery pictures. So you can show them in the gallery here, these images if you wanted. Mm. Or you can do it just on a single image if you wanted to do it like that with just text like this. Right. This email is now becoming a little ridiculous, but you get the gist, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So kind of end it out with the great one. One of the great ones that I like. Oh, and you can also do products in here, which is pretty cool as well. You can do a shop now Ooh. product and stuff like that. So you can do that inside of here with your courses, which will be fun to do. Again, creating like that same content structure where you're doing the image, you're doing the text. Over here, what the biggest difference is, is that you're able to add the, the costs from the price to the old price, kind of giving it that kind of, you know, realistic feel that they're in a, a um, product sale or whatever the case mm -hmm. is. So... All of these all of these elements are really fun to use. You have spacers, so you have those spacers here that kind of create that like image, you know, the effect of I'm going to create a space. So you can make it as wide as you want um, or if you don't want to at all. And then I'm going to get down to where I really like to kind of make this custom. You can do countdowns. Like what? Oh my god, I really wanted that. Downs. Okay. Yeah. You may see countdowns in people's videos all the time, like emails all the time. The greatest thing about this is, is that it will count down realistically, even after they close the email, it will open back up and it'll still count down. Isn't that bomb? 
Yes. Like, that's so bomb. So that's what kind of, like, I, I really fell in love with that because I'm like, what? So you could do that. One of the other things that I really, really fell in love with as well is, and there's there's so many things about Mail of Life that I love, but you can have the ability to do discounts slash coupons. You can mm. have applications in here. But, and there's so many things, you could do tables. But the signature is by far the most fun to play with, right? Mm. So you can do a signature nine times out of ten, it's at the bottom or wherever mm-hmm. you're, you're writing, right? So, for example, mm-hmm. if you were having verbiage up here, um, it'll more than likely have like a signature here. You're able to position it where you want. So, for example, in this case, um, this one is the side signature that I selected. But you're, mm-hmm. you have the ability to select one that's actually in the middle of your mm-hmm. um, box here. So it's digital copy too. So you can definitely create it. You can draw your signature because uh. you want it to be realistic, right? So it's going to yeah. apply it. And it's going to take a second just to apply mm-hmm. based on the scribblage that I just did. But you can draw it, you can type it, you can upload it. So say that you have an image that you actually want to utilize as your signature, you can do that instead, and then that will kind of replace that. The settings Mm -hmm. here are the same. You can either hide it, you can create the signature space to be longer, bigger, whatever the case is. That's Mm -hmm. all in this feature. Are you Mm -hmm. overwhelmed yet? Like, but overwhelmed in a good way. Like, whoa, there's so many possibilities. 